The uniform sphere, or ball, in this problem rolls without slipping up a hill and is launched horizontally off a cliff. We're asked in part A to find how far it lands from the cliff edge. We'll start doing this by finding V top, the translational speed of the ball at the top of the cliff. And we'll do this using the work and energy equation. Work done by other forces plus the kinetic energies, translational plus rotational, plus the initial potential energy equals the sum of the final energies. If we choose the starting point as I, the initial point, and the edge of the cliff as the final point, we can see that in between I and F, there's no work other. At the initial point, the ball is translating, so it has this kinetic energy. It's rotating, so it has this rotational kinetic energy. And choosing Y equals zero on the ground means that it has no initial gravitational potential energy. In the final state, at the edge of the cliff, it's both translating, with this kinetic energy and rotating with this rotational kinetic energy. And it has a gravitational potential energy equal to mgh. We can simplify this result now using the relation between translational speed and rotational speed to solve for omega, the rotational speed, and eliminate that from our work and energy equation. We can also substitute the moment of inertia of a uniform solid sphere, 2 fifths mr squared, to get, after substitution, the result that we show here. From this equation, we need to solve for V top, the translational speed of the ball at the top of the hill. So we can simplify it by canceling the mass m from each term, and then multiplying each term by 2 to get rid of all these 1 halves, picking up a 2 in front of the potential energy term. And finally, notice that the r squared terms cancel from the rotational kinetic energies. Now we can factor out a v naught squared on the left hand side, and replacing 1 plus 2 fifths on each side with 7 fifths lets us solve for the translational speed at the top of the hill. And that's given by the expression shown here. It equals the square root of v naught squared the initial speed squared, minus 10 sevenths g times h, the height of the hill. At this point, let's choose some numbers so we can calculate the speed at the top compared to the speed at the bottom. If we let the initial speed, v naught be 25 meters per second, and the hill have a height of 28 meters, substituting and calculating shows us that the translational speed at the top of the hill equals 15.3 meters per second. Let me record that result up here so that now we can find the distance d that the ball lands from the cliff with a height of 28 meters. I'll erase this so we have room to solve a projectile motion problem now. The next thing to find is the time that the ball is in the air. We'll do that using this kinematic equation. Change in height is v naught y times t minus 1 half g t squared. If we apply this equation to the projectile as it's launched, the initial y component of velocity is zero because the ball is launched horizontally, and the ball falls a distance h. So we can solve for t sub g, the time it takes the ball to hit the ground. Calculating to see that it equals 2.39 seconds. And now we can use the horizontal equation, distance equals v naught x multiplied by the time, to see that the ball lands a distance d of 36.6 meters from the edge of the cliff. Part b asks us how fast the ball is moving just before it hits the ground. That speed is the length of the final velocity vector shown here, with components shown in red, an x component and a y component. Let's find the y component first. That's given by the time-dependent velocity kinematic equation. As before, v top y equals zero. The ball's moving horizontally at the top. And we can substitute the time of flight to see that the final y velocity component is negative 23.4 meters per second. The x component of velocity never changes for a projectile, so it equals its value at the top. That's 15.3 meters per second. 
We find the final speed then by squaring these components, adding them up and taking the square root to see that it equals 28 meters per second. Notice that that is faster than the ball was translating at the very beginning before the ball rolled up the hill. And part C asks us to explain why it's moving faster here than it was at the beginning. The ultimate reason is because of energy conservation. So let's choose the initial and final points shown here at the very beginning and very end of the motion and write down the work and energy equation. In between the points I and F, there's no work other, so that term equals zero. The ball begins and ends at the same height, so the gravitational potential energy terms cancel. And we have noticed that the translational speed at the beginning is less than the translational speed at the end. So the initial translational kinetic energy is less than the final translational kinetic energy. For the energy equation to balance then, it must be that the initial rotational kinetic energy is greater than the final rotational kinetic energy. And that's actually the case. In the initial state, the ball is rotating with an omega determined by the initial speed v0. But in the final state, the ball is rotating with an angular speed omega determined by the translational speed v top when it was launched into the air. And that speed is lower than the initial speed. So that when you sum those two types of kinetic energy, the total value in the beginning equals the total value in the end.